Yesterday, we built indexes, or I'm sorry, we rebuilt our indexes on our database um, for every time there was an index. And this is part of our administrative jobs. So as you can see, our procedure here has that indexing. Uh, one quick note about what we did yesterday. There is a faster way of doing all of that, even though from a performance perspective, it's not always faster. And that is this stored procedure. And in this stored procedure for each table, what you will do is alter index all on question mark and then you will put in the syntax uh, rebuild partition all with etc 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 and then you'll execute it and that actually accomplishes the same thing that we did yesterday with that um, that begin uh, the loop and the variable table <clears throat> like I said there was a there was a tables that I had that were there were I want to say about several thousand tables with uh, hundreds of indexes and I actually used both methods and my method of course was a little bit faster but in certain situations the short procedure um, SP MS for each table may be faster and as you can tell it's a lot less code why people would do that <clears throat> okay um, so now we're going to be doing integrity and backing up the first part of this is <clears throat> on this code and, and I'm not going to try to type out this code just because it'll take too long is we're going to verify we're going to create a temp table and we're first going to verify if the temp table exists this is because when you execute a stored procedure and a temp table or a table is already in existence and you are going to create that table in your code if the table exists the code will break when you try to create the table so anytime you create a temp table I would suggest using the command if object ID database uh, consistency this temp table is not null begin drop table and what that does if you want to verify uh, well, my computer froze sorry um, what that's doing is if we select this object you'll see that it's null because it doesn't exist if this table is created second we create the table and we run that command again you'll see there's already an object database consistency in the database. Um, if we run, uh, if we were to run a create table command again, <clears throat> it would actually break our code. Of course, this is coming back with object ID being null. One second, that should not be the case. Yeah, so, okay. So I need to put tempdb here. Of course, what's, what's very interesting is this code will actually um, drop it anyway. And so that drops the table. But the idea is your code is going to break if you're creating a table and um, anytime you create a table in any stored procedure, the exception of the rule is a, a variable table, which I usually prefer using because a variable table doesn't need to be dropped. Any of these hash tables must be dropped. Um, so if you're creating a table in your code, you will either want to always drop it at the end, which you see I do, or you'll want to make sure that you start out with um, a dropping table if it exists. Keep in mind, too, the code may break at another point, and so that's why starting it out with this if object ID database consistency is not null, uh, drop the table. So what what I've done here is I've populated the, uh, the temp table with various... Uh, columns that I will be running dbcc check db um, wrong database on now dbcc check db uh, checks the database integrity and you have an option that you can use 
which will produce table results. And this is how I derived these columns up here with this, ta this temp table. If you run this command, hold on. You will see the columns and the results of dbcc check db. The big key on this is the very final column, which is check db found zero allocation errors, zero consistent errors in the database client marketing. Okay, so that is very important for us um, to look at. Now, in this script, we don't want to back up the database if there's no integrity. So, if it found errors, we don't want there to be a backup. So what we do here um, with our DBCC check DB is we're going to insert the results into our created temp table. So we've created our temp table. We're inserting the results. This right here just executes um, whatever code is between there. Uh, for instance, let's see if this will work. Execute. For instance, if I were to put a select statement um, in between air quotes in an execute, it will go search that table. So anything that you put in air quotes, this is the syntax, you're executing this. But we're inserting the results of this um, code execution into that table. So once we've done that, we're going to go back to and look at yesterday's video to for kind of an explanation of how to declare variables. We're going to declare the variable count. It's going to be a tiny integer because we it only needs to be um, actually this right here could be a, um, a tiny integer actually will work, uh, but it could be I guess a bit because it's it's going to either come back with one or zero. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to count from that table that we built, the temp table, database consistency, where the message text, which is where the check DB found zero allocation errors and zero consistency errors, is like that. If there's a count of one, notice if the count is greater than zero, um, then we actually perform the backup, and I'll explain this in a second. If not, it will print out the database integrity compromised and then, of course, this right here inserts to a table. That's a different database that I have, but it inserts to another table to let me know, and then I review that off of a report. Um, but in this case, we're just going to print um, uh, this right here. And um, I'm going to change the name. Okay. I'm basing it off of my uh, other database here. Okay, so if the count is greater than zero, we're going to begin this process. And that's the simple syntax of an if statement in T-SQL. It's if, um, if something is true, then begin, and then there's an end below, and then else begin and end. Uh, it's a little bit different than um, C-sharp, where you just have a, a bracket open it up. Okay, so we're going to declare variables here. This is how the backup works. We declare a name, a path, a file name, and a file date. And then I have set the path to be on my D drive backup. I've set the name to be client marketing. And then I select the file date to be um, this value here. This is important because if you have dashes and whatnot in your value, you will find, I'll just show you what this does, you will find that your code will break because you'll see how it produces a value where all the numbers are together your code will break. I ran into this issue the other day because a dash to a computer is a path. is part of a path, so it'll break your code. So that's why we convert it to a format which is just numbers, 2013-06-05. It's kind of like entering a, into an automated system in a phone. You enter numbers, you don't enter dashes uh, because that would confuse it. Then we set our file name, <clears throat> which this is the full the full path when we do the backup because the the script for backup is you back up the database name to disk wherever the file path is so this is where um, you'll see that's the the syntax here so that's what this entire file path is you'll see the dot bak that's the backup file so we have the path which is here we have the name which is our database name client marketing underscore the date and now that's the syntax that I use. Uh, you could use a dash here, you could use anything that you want, but I like to keep those separate. And um, once again, this can be eliminated. Um, and then of course, 
we back up the uh, the database. And in this case, I print the database is backed up, and um, I count what um, I also count, or I um, print the value of whatever the count was, <coughs> which <coughs> um, which means I got one value of a check DB found zero allocation errors and zero consistency errors. So the advantage of this script here, and like I said, to, to save time, I'm not going to type it all out, is that we create a temporary table. Notice we drop the table at the end, by the way. One thing to note. We create a temporary table. We insert the check DB results into it. If the database has integrity, we back it up. If the database has no integrity, we don't back it up. Instead, we alert the person who's executing the stored procedure that actually it's compromised. And so what that means is we need to go back to one of the BAK files that the integrity is not compromised on. And this is valuable because when we're, there are so many times, I've seen this with clients, where they just back up a database, and they back up transla transaction logs, and then they run CheckDB independently. And um, and I've seen this time and time again where they'll find out that some of the, the BAK files, CheckDB was saying that there were errors and they were backing up a database with errors. Um, and so this prevents that from occurring. You're alerted to the errors in the sense that you don't get a BAK file and in the sense that it also will print that out. Actually, I have this called in a C-sharp application and it will print it out on C-sharp. Um, but like you saw, the, the administrative table that I removed from here, I actually have it inserted into that table, and then a report runs off of that table. Um, but there are actually several databases that I have done work on where the client actually had flawed um, uh, BAK files that, were, that had errors on them, or integrity errors on them. And so one of the, the, the chief most important things anyone can do is prevent backing up something, which is which is compromised. So this is a script this will I'll be adding to the administrative tasks but for people running SQL Server Express again this is not in a job this is just in a stored procedure um, we now have it to where it will uh, rebuild all our indexes and now we have it to where it will do a perform a check DB but while it's performing a check DB if the database has integrity it'll back it up as well if it doesn't it will print out an error and it will not back up the database so we won't have um, flawed BAKs as far as CheckDB is concerned.